This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. This is our dear friend. We're going to talk to Kauai Mayor Carvalho, who is a dear, dear friend. And it is heartbreaking to talk about another storm on Kauai. But that's the way it is. Kauai is, as you know, the oldest of the Hawaiian islands. And according to Marcia, the most beautiful island in the chain. At least it was until the storm. What can I say? Mayor? Aloha. Marcia. Aloha. Ah, I am so sorry to talk to you again about the damage. But yeah. Yeah. what can we say? Tell us yes. tell us about what is going on with <laughs> Kauai. Well, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, to talk story, yeah, Marsha, and just get the, the word out on what's happening here on Kauai. Of course, the flash flood warning that we were in last yesterday, we're, we're all done as of last night at 8.20, so there's no flash flood warning here on Kauai. Everything was canceled. But the next thing, as of this morning, we assembled as a team. Now that the rain has subsided, and it's time to get boots on the ground and do our damage assessments, I wanted them to get out as soon as possible so we can address the issues accordingly. Uh, and then, of course, seeing what kind of equipment, assets we need, and then uh, working with community to rebuild as soon as can. People are still, you know, going through what happened in April. And unfortunately, a lot of the same areas that got damaged in April got severely damaged one more time. So. We're kind of going through that along with other parts of our island right now and doing an assessment of the damage. So are you out walking door to door? This morning, I was out walking door to door in the Koloa community. Uh, there was a lot of flooding there. The river overflowed again, our Waikomo stream and Waikoko. And so I wanted to revisit the families, the same ones that we did the last time in April, just to follow up. And of course, there's still very sad and, and trying to, you know, get better, and then all of a sudden this happened. So not as severe as the last time, but just going through the whole experience again brought back that bad memories. And so I wanted to make sure they were okay. So I was out there one, one house at a time, uh, visiting with them, and then seeing some of the damage, like this lady had her roof uh, fall in. So we had an assessment team with us to look forward to helping her and others. Well, we have some pictures that we took from your webpage and uh, about showing the damage. And I wasn't quite sure what was from April and, and today, uh, this, this week. Yeah. However, uh, the damage is just unbelievable. Right, right. And that was uh, in the Kolo area. Now, we went back to the north side of Kauai. That area was totally isolated back in April. I mean, remember the roadways yes. were washed out, the mudslides and all that. So my concern on the North Shore was that the work that we've already done with the State Department of Transportation, that it could also be just wiped out again. But fortunately, we're okay uh, as far as the damage to the existing area. There was damage to other areas of the roadway that caused us to actually shut down access again uh, to that particular North Shore area of our island. But as of this morning, uh, happy to say that the road has been opened again, and so we're monitoring that accordingly as we speak for the north side of our island. And so still, um, again, our team went out there. They're out there as we speak uh, to do their damage assessment um, reporting and talking with the families as well. Wow. On the north side of our place. That's the north side. So, yeah. um, now, tell me, uh, uh, 
Nihihau is to the west of you. Nihau is further north. North. Of, of, yeah, of our island. Did they get any like, damage? Do you know? Yeah. I'm sorry? Did they get any damage? Nihau. No, Nihau is, Nihau is fine. It, 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 looking at the storm, it looked like it was sitting right on top of me. Yeah, yeah we, we, you know, every time we activate our emergency operating center, we have representatives or team or family members from Nihau in the house. So we're totally engaged and Nihau is fine. And you're right, it is the western part of, of, of Kauai, but we're the northern island overall. And so, yeah, so Nihau is fine. And they offered their help and support, you know, as well to Kauai because of, we use a barge to, to transfer supplies and stuff from Kauai to Nihau. So we had access to their barge should we need it uh, because of closures of our roadways. So we're all good on Nihau. Oh, great. Great. I, uh, this is just a darling place, even though I've not been there. Uh, oh, but it's, ex <laughs> that, that I guess, because it's called Forbidden Island, there's a yeah. certain, uh, what do you say, I want to, yes, everybody wants to see a Forbidden Island. I know. <laughs> so so yeah. is that the place where Prince Kuhio was born? Is that the one? Niao. Prince Kuhio? Yeah. Not uh, Niao, yeah, that's our, that's our is that, Aloha Island. Yeah, you know, is that's that, totally is that where he was born, Prince Kuhio? Yes, that is my understanding. Oh. So, okay, so I'm going to come and see. And a lot of our Hawaiian families, of course, live there yet. And in fact, what we're trying to do is preserve the Nihau language because we're finding that the language is kind of fading away. So we're working closely with some of the kupuna on Nihau and working to preserve the language by actually taking our general plan for the entire island and translating it into Nihau language. So there's a Hawaiian version, an English version, and a Nihau version <laughs> of the general plan. Wow. So we're trying to preserve and keep it going, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now, 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 what's different in the Nihau language and the Hawaiian language? Okay, the Nihau language and how it's, it's delivered does not have any okinas or kahako. You know how you say um, maikai? Yes. But okina is maikai. You know, there's no okina or kahako in that particular language. So it's, it's a different delivery and very special. And so we want to preserve that. And so, um, like ha'a ha'a would be ha'a, you know? And so that kind of uh, difference. Is there a difference? I know there's a difference in your pronunciation, and I hear it differently, but does it have the same meaning? Same meaning. Same yes. meaning. Okay. But delivered differently. But yeah. delivered differently. So that's the specialness, if you will, of the language that we want to preserve and then incorporate you know, in, into, the, into the schools, too, if we can, as, as a curriculum. So you have... Just to keep it alive, yeah. Yeah, so you would have... Now you have Hawaiian, as we know it, speakers on Kauai, on Kauai, on Kauai and then you're yeah. going to introduce the Nihihau language also. Right, right. So the children would have three languages. Yeah, we'd have three options, yeah. Just to keep the Nihihau language, uh, you know, alive and, and moving within the schools and through our kiki. Would, the, would that translate to, I mean, would that be taught in other schools further down the right. islands? Right now we're working with our immersion schools here on Kauai only, and I believe they're looking at some of the schools on Oahu, but just take it one step at a time. We want to get a good, solid foundation on it first. And so that's why we're working with our kupuna from uh, Nihau and, and our education uh, specialist. Now, tell me, Nihau is... Why is it the Forbidden Island? What, what does that mean? Well, you know, originally, Nihau obviously was to the 
Hawaiian Kingdom, right? Right. And that was a place where our white people, how should I say, were kept, and nobody was allowed other than the Hawaiians to step foot on that island for, for the kingdom. Oh. And so that was part of the... So is that where we think the Hawaiians originated? From here, yeah, from, from Kauai. From Kauai so yeah. and Niha. Yeah. yeah. So that however they, however you originate, <laughs> this is... Right. This was the but, all Kittite, but now we're totally connected, whether it be for you know support, emergency purposes, um, food, you know, all of that. You know, try to, the beautiful Nihau chalets that, that they make on, on, on Nihau, you know, and all of that is preserved, yeah. Well, so now let's get back to you and Kauai and the storm. What, yeah. what happens? How do you make sure that everything has hap that happened in April is taken care of, and now we move to August? So, right. So we what have happens? Specific, uh, yeah. Oh, no. No. I'm ahead. saying that in terms of FEMA, in terms of the state, how do all of these right. things come together to make sure those people are whole? How does that work? Right. So we already have a um, emergency proclamation that I signed as mayor. The governor signed as governor. We had a proclamation declaration from the president. And so all of that placed us in the opportunity to receive funding from the federal government for public safety and individual assistance. Public safety, of course, is our roadways and waterways and all of that. And individual assistance would be opportunities for our local families to receive funding to repair and maintain their homes. So all of that footprint that came from the flooding, I'm going to say, in April has its own separate portfolio mm -hmm. and assessment plan. All the funding, everything that came within that, timeline and time frame is specific to that, which is why today, which we experienced possible hurricane lane, which should then transform into flood watch and flood warning and all of that, that footprint, we have funding set aside separate from the flooding we had in April. That is why our team members are out, boots on the ground today, to do on-site assessments on the damage that was done separate from the April flooding. Okay. So there may be some similar areas that kind of pick up from there, so we'll determine that at a time. And then there's other areas that um, we need to look at it as separate. Okay. Now we're so going to take we're well, going to take a break, and when we come back, okay. let's talk about the new areas and the okay. assessment. Okay. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. I can play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I so do. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at one called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show, where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. And today we are talking to our dear, dear friend, 
the mayor of Kauai, Bernard Cavallo, about this horrible, horrible flooding and the things that Mother Nature keeps on doing to the island of Kauai. So, Mayor, tell us yeah. how you separate the April uh, issue and the August. How do, how do you yeah. separate that? Because I know when you're dealing with government forms and all of the stuff, everything has to be separate. So how do you do right. that? How do you look at a place and say this is, oh, this was April, this was left over from April, and this is something new from September? I'm, I keep saying September, oh. August. Right. Yeah, August. Well, oh. the way we, we do that is number one, we already have documented all the damage assessment reports from our April flooding. That has been completed, which is why this morning our, our team went out again to do a follow-up assessment, and whatever findings separate from what we already documented would fall into this time frame. And we're also asking, like we did the last time, all people affected, our families affected by the flooding event, that they can also report their damages online. And that is very helpful, Marsha, that sometimes we miss things. So we're asking our families and businesses out there if they were affected by this particular storm, that they can get online at our website, kwai.gov, www.kwai.gov, and report their, um, their, fi their findings there so we can get them qualified for federal assistance in addition to the boots on the ground from our team. So the team goes door to door, trying door to make to sure door. make sure everyone is included, and then... Whatever, yes, yes. So do they have power so they can get online? Right now, uh, as we speak, as of last night, there were some areas of Waiheha that was out, but now everybody has power. And so they have access to, um, you know, their their online support. So they can do that. They can make phone calls too if they need to ask questions. We have that online as well, uh, just to get information uh, out to them. So how far are you physically, your offices, from the well, the from, damaged area? How far is that? Your office. Like the, right, the, here, right, right here, right here, So out to the North Shore is about. 30 miles away from here or so, mm -hmm. 30, 40 miles from Lihui. Yeah. And so, like I said, I just got a phone call from my, our guys going out that they had limited access to certain areas on the North Shore, which had to have them actually kind of take a detour here and there, So, which is a good thing because then we know we can tell our people where not to go and where they can go. Yes. And so we also had people who weren't able to cross Hanalei Bridge that was because just gonna, yeah. that whole bridge was, was flooded, yeah? So they would have to stay and uh, shelter in place. Yeah, the, but since that, that bridge, everything, oh, the, yeah, the, pi the, bridge. the pictures of the Hanalei Bridge were everywhere, all over the world. Pictures yeah, of the Hanalei yeah. Bridge. So, Hanalei Bridge, that's the main bridge. <laughs> So once that bridge is out, well, yeah. what happens to the people on the other side? How do they get to the... So that, yeah, so what we do, we of course inform them. We know we have water gauges. We know as the water is rising, we're informing them to vacate now, uh, you know, voluntary evacuation. The ones who choose to stay back are asked to really uh, shelter in place. We are sure we have equipment and supplies already stored on that side of the river. We already had our police and fire and Red Cross teams already deployed from that side of the river. So we have a plan in place, Marsha, uh, as we watch the water gauge, that we get our guys across. Should they not have access, at least have services uh, readily available for them on that side. And if need be, because of emergencies, we have helicopter use and boats and all that, barges and whatever we need. So they would, let's, let's hope you don't have an emergency, but that would bring them to, what is it, Wilcox Hospital? 
Well, Cox Hospital, yes. So they would actually fly in if there's, God forbid, a major emergency uh, health and safety issue or, you know, a situation where there may be some major, major health issue, we would get our guys in via, you know, that kind of transportation. Well, now the state has issued a brown water uh, notice. Do you have the same issues now where I live? The water went by rather brown yesterday. But yes, do so you still have the brown water issues? We currently have a brown water advisory, stay out of flood waters and storm water runoff due to the possible overflowing of cesspool, sewers, battles, et cetera. So we too, Marsha, have a have a brown water advisory. So really telling our people to stay out of the water right now uh, and pending more information. So with a brown water, you, you, I guess all kind of things are in it that you don't know. So you would, if you're in it, you could get some kind of infection. Right, we're saying from you know whatever pesticides, animal feces, uh, cesspool sewers, all of that. There's a potential for that kind of um, you know mix of into our water system. So we don't want anybody to get any kind of sickness. So. When we get the brown water advisory, we really encourage them to stay away from the water for, until we, we open it up again. Now, here's the big question. Tourism. Yes. <laughs> you are the most beautiful island and everybody wants to see it. So how are you dealing with the, the tourists that were already there? Yeah, so you know, we have uh, Sukanoho, our quiet visitors, Bureau uh, President, uh, CEO, and so we're already advising our hotels, our visitors, very early in the in the in the reporting to either vacate or, depending on the timing, to remain in their hotels. We have uh, uh, evacuation within the hotel areas. All the managers and hotels are part of this team, and we we pretty much shelter our, our visitors in place and keep them off the roadway up to a certain point. Well, So they, they have a plan. Each hotel has their own uh, evacuation as well as sheltering plan and resources and supplies, all of that readily available. That's part of our pre-planning with our hotel industry. And it's, if we can, we try to get our visitors, if they choose to, to leave earlier, earlier in the notice. But most of them choose to stay. So. We, we keep them sheltered in place. Now, did you get, I know in April there was a drop off on tourism, but did it come back between that time, since that time, has it come back, tourism? Uh, we, we were saying, you know, because they were thinking we're pretty much, because of the volcanic action happening on Hawaii Island, that it affected the entire state. And we're saying, no, 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 we're ready. <laughs> come, come visit our island. The only thing you can cannot visit right now in Kauai is the North Shore because of what happened. But every place else is accessible. And I tell you, Marsha, we had a whole lot of tourists and visitors come to Kauai since April. And mm -hmm. that's a good thing for us. But now we're in this situation again, yeah? Yeah. But, you know, you need the tourist dollars. So there's, I'm glad that you're seeing an influx of... Oh, yeah. yeah. We had a good, good um, amount of visitors come here to Kauai. So, Since April. Okay. Now, in my little brain that wanders around through all of the myths and legends, one of my favorite is the Minnehuni Pond on Kauai. That okay. the story goes that the Minnehunis built the pond, the fish pond, and they know the Minnehunis did it overnight, and all of the rocks are laid out in order. So tell us about the fish pond. Well, let me tell you about, in fact, I was just out at the salt pond. You know, we have our Hawaiian salt makers out right. there mm -hmm. at the Minnehunis fish pond. And so we actually are moving boulders this morning to help secure that area. Uh, so our salt makers, which you can only get Hawaiian salt from here on Kauai, 
that is actually made here uh, to help support them from any kind of access from other kinds of vehicles and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the old part of the story would be that the Minihunis would come at night, yeah? Yeah. And make sure that everything is secured before anybody could could come and visit and make it safe. So anyway, interesting you asked that question because <laughs> we were up there this morning actually placing boulders uh, to assure that the salt makers were kept safe and nobody had access with all kinds of vehicles to get into and damage the possible salt that is making that is made there. Now, so that all ties into the bigger picture, like you're saying. Yep. So let me add this. You can use it as a marketing tool. <laughs> the okay. Hawaiian salt made yeah. there is not yeah. from the ocean. And just last week on National Geographic, they said because of the plastics in the ocean that they're suggesting that you don't use sea salt. So you can use it as a marketing tool that this salt is not from the ocean. So no. this salt is no plastics. Separate. separate. Yeah, no plastics. No plastics. This, this is true, true Hawaiian salt made from a Hawaiian salt maker's families from ages and ages ago. And it's only done in this particular area of our island. And it's separate from the ocean. Good. So we need to continue to preserve. And that is why, like I said, we're placing boulders and not trying to dig up anything, you know, just to keep it in the same kind of um, character, if you will, and, and keep the salt bed in good shape and protect it. And that's the big part there. Well. Thank you so much for spending this time with us to take it away from your duties, which are immense. And to thank you again for always being there for us and for taking such good care of your island. And we will talk thank to you again you. soon. Thank you so much, Marsha. Aloha. And I appreciate any time to talk story and share, you know, Kauai and our hearts with, with our people. Mahalo. Mahalo. Aloha, and we'll see Aloha. you next time.